Hi, I'm David. Welcome to this episode of Behind the Render. Today, I'm covering Synthwave or Vaporwave. Now, those two different styles have slightly different variations. There are more in-depth videos that will go over the differences. However, if this more or less is the look you're going for with the glow and the grid, that 80s sort of uh, pop retro vibe, this is how you do it. All right. So to get started, we have this camera. I've already set it up so that it tracks through space. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding a plane for the ground. And we're just gonna hit the S key to scale it up. Get to know the uh, hotkey keys. So if I tumble out of the camera view, and I show you the animation, I've got it slightly tilted. So we've got our grid here. And if we want to start to see what we're working with, we would go into the Render Engine EV, make sure you have Bloom and Screen Space Reflections turned on. This is going to allow a couple of different things. Now, I've already gone ahead and made some shaders here. So here's our grid. To make that, we're gonna go into our shading tab. And all you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, find the grid shader and uh, plug it into the output. And uh, there you go. That's it. I'm just kidding. So if we tab inside this group, we can see what we're working with here. In the previous video I made, I discussed how you can subdivide an object and use the geometry to get the grid. So for this one, it's going to be using a texture. So I'll walk you through setting this up. Shift A to search. You're gonna look for texture coordinates. This is going to pull the unwrapping. Since this is just a plane, it should be good to go as is. If you do any modifications, you're gonna to want to unwrap that, which I can show you how to do that as well. So if we go to the UV editing, so it's selected, right? The edit mode, so you press A to make sure you've selected everything, right? Come over here, select everything press the U key, that unwraps it. Going back to the shader. So you've got your texture coordinates. This is telling it, you know, what to use. If you don't want to use your UV unwrap information, you can try generated. It tends to work fairly well most of the time. So the next one to add is mapping, as you can see there. Plug that into the vector. So this is going to ensure that grid is lying flat. Then we're going to add our image. And again, this is going to keep things running light. Image texture. Now, if you don't have a grid texture already made, then what you can do is open up After Effects and use the grid plugin. And you're just gonna wanna set it up to be high level. So make sure that each corner is 25% of the square and you should be good to go. We've got our grid now. The next bit is to mix it with the color and the emission. Next, we're gonna need to grab the mix shader and we're using factor because this is essentially going to work as a mat. We're going to grab our emission and plug that into the first node because they're reversed for whatever reason in Blender. This is the top, this is the bottom layer. This will give us our color. So right now it's white. You could just stick with, you know, that if you want. I like being able to have the sliders. Now we're gonna bring in our principal add in with the add shader. Make that base color black. Bring the specular up, bring the roughness down. And everything else looks pretty good. And then that outputs to the shader. Take this output node here and instead pipe that one in. Now it looks different. Part of that is because of the mapping. Not only does it allow for you to set the orientation, but also the scale of the image. So I've got it set five across the board versus if it's set to one, it's appearing like these squares are larger. So if I were to do a 10, 
you can see how that makes it smaller and tiles it across. Now we don't have a lot of glow coming off of this because of our emission shader. So this is set to a strength of one right now, so it only looks like that. And if we want to make it a little bit more obvious, we can change it to a red. So based on the scale of the scene is how much strength you'll need. So if your scene scale is different, this number may be different for you. I'm going to set this to a 50 and see how that looks. I'm gonna change this to a five. One side note, if you're making your scene very large and you're wondering why it's cutting off in the end, press the N key and this will bring up this side menu here. So this is to view the node group information over here. On this top viewer, this will give you your hubbing range. So this is usually set to about a thousand by default and you're gonna to wanna to increase that to a larger number so you can work with a bigger scene. So just as a heads up. We're gonna go back into the layout and we are going to add our moon or sun, depending on what you prefer. So we're gonna add another plane and we're gonna scale it up with the S key. Just gonna click it back. You can also go in here and change the scaling in here. So if we know we want it to be 15 by 15 by 15, we can do that. I'm gonna move it with the G key. I'm gonna press Y. All right, now we want it to be facing towards the camera. So we're gonna hit the R key for rotation. And we're gonna hit the X key to rotate along the X axis. And we're gonna hit nine to zero and then enter. And that will rotate that 90 degrees. Nice and clean. So let me go through this. And this is why I have these preset up so that it's a little bit easier to go over for this video format because to get this, it is kind of a artful process of figuring out exactly what you want it to be. So again, we've got our texture coordinates and mapping. I have the mapping slightly different between these two because I am uh, changing the position between the opacity map, which is gonna be pretty much standard. So that one's gonna be normal, but I wanted this to be different to get the position of the colors to be what I wanted. So if we want, more of the uh, yellow color, like we typically see instead of that orange, we just go in here and change that. And then this positioning here, we'll adjust where it is there so that we can bring it up. So we can move this further up, we can bring it over like that, and then we see more of that yellow. This is just using color ramp. Now I did utilize the separate X, Y, Z here, and then pumping in the Y so that it's vertical. So that's important there. And then I have a mix color. So if I want, I can change the overall color mix. It's at a uh, 50 or 0.5 threshold for mixing these colors here. So again, this gives more control. If you just want to do a moon or sun with a color ramp, you could plug this directly into the emission, just like we did for the grid. But instead of using that hue, I'm using a ramp to get that variation. You could plug the color ramp into the grid and get some interesting results. Now, to get the cutout to work properly, that's where we need the transparent BSDF plugged into this mix shader here. If you go to your shader node in EV, you are going to make sure that this blend mode is set to alpha blend. It's usually on default set to opaque, but as you can see, that creates this square. So it's not transparent. So you have to set it to alpha blend and that will give you that transparency when you plug a map into a mix shader. So the map is set as the factor once again, to create that cutout, transparency into the shader and then the emission. And then you then add that with the principled to get that. And that's how you set up the moon. You can Pause the video if you need to, to you know get all the little details of the numbers to copy it exactly. But again, you're gonna wanna adjust things based on the scene and based on what your needs are. So by me going through and telling you what each of the nodes do, you will have a better understanding of how you can adjust it and make it your own. Hopefully you'll learn how to apply this in a principled format rather than just, <laughs> principled, rather than just copying and pasting and I want you to be able to learn and grow and, and use this as a, uh, as a tool.
the reason we turned on bloom, that's how it looks without it. So if you don't have that bloom turned on, it's not gonna look like it's glowing. So next we're gonna add the text. And then for the material, then he has an emission, is an emission with a strength over 10, plugged into the surface. And that will create a nice glowing text. If you're just using glows, emissions by themselves tend to work. If you're working with transparencies or needing to combine it with different materials, then you have to get into those mixers, shading nodes. Another thing to consider is being able to see the reflections. It needs to be close enough to the ground. All right, so if you want to add to create the deformed terrain, as seen in the example here, you're going to be using the modifier stack. First with subdivision, then with array. This allows me to keep a uniform plane and then make it so that it stretches out in a nice long road. Then the vertex group is used to assign where the deformation is happening, which is the next modifier which is the displacement. You're using those two together to tell Blender where you want the displacement to happen. This allows me to create the ridges using a spline. And then of course, the particle system is for the trees and using that displacement vertex group to assign the trees to that specific ridge line. And that's how you create the varied terrain. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more content, give the video a like, and comment below with questions you have on this video or content you would like to see in the future. Thank you for watching.